Dracula is dead. By my hand. On the hand of his speaker. On the hand of the last of the Belmonts. So, season three of Castlevania dropped last week, and man, this shit is good as hell. Best video game um, TV show ever, or maybe even adaptation. Though there's a few I haven't watched. Um, so, season three picks up where season two left off with the follow of Dracula's death, with Trevor and Sypha head out into the unknown. Uh, Hector in chains at Camilla's mercy. Isaac with a horde of night creatures at his defense, and Alucard as the ruler of Dracula's castle, Castlevania. While well, season two was leading up to the big battle of Dracula throughout most of the season, season three is more of a character driven uh, story. Season three starts a month, I'm like a month or so after the conclusion of um, season two, and in that time, Trevor and Sypha are a couple, and um, they're traveling together while slaying. Um, the leftover demons um, from Dracula's reign. Their journey um, leads them to a town where they meet a group of monks with a leader who has the most creepy blue eyes I've seen. And um, these folks worship Dracula. Here, the duo meets a magician named um, Saint Germain, and the three of them investigate the ongoings of these monks. Meanwhile, Alucard appears to be going. Um, kind of lonely he's he's lonely he's going um he's going pretty crazy i'm um, sitting in castles um sitting in dracula's castle um by himself it's only been a month in his time but it's really be uh, it's sitting um hard on him right now um this is all until he meets a couple of japanese warriors who seek him out to train them to become monster hunters um, there's also a third plot line that involves Hector being dragged back to Camilla's castle, and um, Camilla has uh, three um, vampire sisters on her council, and she's plotting away. Um, well, now that Dracula's out the way, she's plotting her next move since uh, Dracula's gone. And finally, the fourth plot line, which is my favorite, involves Isaac on his journey gathering a night creature army to seek revenge on Hector for betraying him and Lord Dracula. Isaac's story is so intriguing to me because you can see how he's just trying to mind his own damn business. The people keep fucking with him. Since he had joined Dracula's army, he had long lost hope in humanity, and I could sort of see why given his backstory and how people constantly treat him, um, especially uh, when he was at the desert just trying to get a drink at the end of season two. And um, we saw just a group of people just came up and immediately thought it was just to uh, steal him and sell him into slavery but throughout the story you see that there are some people who are cons towards him and the ship captain explains this to him in the best dialogue scene in this show first of all this captain is dope as shit he sees Isaac rolling up with a squad of demons and doesn't even flinch and he has Isaac meet him on his terms he's like yo um so you you could kill me and all my crew and take this boat but you can't really <laughs> steer a boat by yourself I, do you even know how to sail a boat and Isaac was like nah and they like he has a point he got him to come on his ship no no trouble at all when the captain points out to um, Isaac while there are plenty of cruel people out in this world there are plenty that are kind and, and um, uses Isaac's own tale of the old man from the shop that gave him a mirror and also himself as examples I can also resonate Isaac's tale as like as a black man. As I see it on on here, Isaac is always seen in, as a threat, and in the case in the desert, a commodity in which to profit from. There's also the pent up rage in his soul um, from dealing with slavery and the justice he sees on a regular basis. I'm not sure if this is intentional, but in this season, the two people we see um, that are kind to Isaac are two other black people. While other, every other person that tries to harm him, from the desert bandits to the wizard um, in that town are white. In the battle of the wizard where we see Isaac fighting off the wizard's mind control spell, that could be seen as an allegory to um, black people breaking free from the chains of slavery. This wizard literally took a whole town as his slaves. 
And um, not to forget, but that entire battle against the wizard and his slaves was amazing. That shit, that, like, that shit was bomb, man. And I think that giant ball of people was a reference to a Castlevania ball. I think it's Legion, if I'm not mistaken. But before I gush on too much about Isaac, who had the dopest um, arc this season, I would like to go back to the Vampire Sisters arc. So, Carmilla locks Hector in a dungeon and proposes to her Vampire Sisters that she wants to create what's basically a 800 mile long cage slash farm for humans, giving them giving them and every vampire in the kingdom an, in, an easy and endless supply of human blood. The problem with putting this plan out is that Carmilla has lost a lot of her has lost a lot of her forces due to the battle with Dracula from last season. That's why she took Hector prisoner. As a forge master, he has the ability to turn human corpses into night creatures, like Isaac, thus um, helping with her manpower problem. Now, while Camilla comes up with the idea, she lets her sisters in a castle to be the ones to actually plan and put this into motion. Which is kind of... Which is kind of lazy on my part. She could, she could just, she could actually do some shit. Um, oh yeah. Um, I forgot the couple's names here, but the the brown skinned vampire is uh, the organizer. She organizes the people and supplies needed. Um, the buff vampire. Uh, she's in charge of the military forces, which is self-explanatory. And then there is Lenore, who's the diplomat in charge of bringing peace and pers and uses persuasion as her weapon. And at this point of the story, she's the most important in putting Carmilla's plan in motion. Being a captive, uh, Hector isn't willing to do Carmilla's bidding, so it's up to Lenore to find a way to get Hector to become their forge master. In season two, I thought Carmilla was the baddest bitch around, but nah. After seeing this shit right here, Lenore is bad bitch vampire number one. Her appearance just caught me off guard. I mean, she is too kawaii. Like, I never thought vampires could be this cute, goddamn. But in true enemy fashion, she lets you know quick not to take her cuteness for weakness. I love Lenore's personality and design. She goes um, a, a bit against the traditional vampire traits of being violent. Um... And not detached from humanity. She's actually kind of um, close to some of her human ideals. As a since she's a diplomat, she's a peacekeeper. Although what Carmilla has in store is far from peace, at least from the perspective of humans. She's also kawaii as fuck, as I mentioned, and she's cunning. While I did say she has a sense of humanity, I mean in regards to having things like um, philosophy, peacekeeping, business. We see. Once she gets Hector fully to her side, she considers him a pet. Like, a living person is a pet, so she clearly um, still has the common viewpoint of humans being beneath vampires. This arc is great as it shows how downtrodden and vulnerable Hector has become by having a fun character like Lenore and also teasing the grand conflict that will come in Season 4. So Trevor, Cypher, and Jermaine's adventure leads them to discovering that the monks are trying to open a portal to hell and potentially resurrect the Dracula. And well, in a showdown that's both tragic and intense. The marks that were found on the buildings across the town uh, were for an inferno spell that sacrificed the people of the town into feeding the night creature so it could be strong enough to open the portal. The battle with the night creatures here was spectacular and especially a joy to watch Sypha cast her spells. The three of them managed to close a portal and prevent all hell from breaking loose on Earth. And in the residing aftermath, we discover that the judge killed children. Um, I'm still not sure how I feel about that. Um, I mean, I seen twi I think I've seen twists like this before, but it just hit me in a weird way. Um, in this show. And in the finale of Alucard's arc, the twins came to train with Alucard. Uh, the, the twins that came to train with Alucard seemed trusting, but their history of betrayal got the best of them. Now, probably like most people, that incest threesome caught me off guard. Caught me like so off guard that I wasn't expecting them to kill him. Like, my mind wasn't even there. I was just like, wow, aren't they brother and sister and they're having a threesome with a vampire? So, like as y'all saw, Alucard killed the two of him with his um, 
of his enchanted sword and now it looks like he's detached from people permanently or at least until Sh Sh Trevor and Sypha come back or maybe not until like the show goes into S Symphony of the Night if the show decides to even do that at all overall how I feel about this season best one yet without question like no hands like no questions here this this is the best season i just love the show the animation in the show is incredible it's, it's really fluid even though um i think there was one part at the end of but i thought it looked kind of funny it might have been intentional like after trevor does his big attack with the uh with the two webs he has in his hand and i think like he's trying to recover and a cypher picks him up it looked like it's missing a lot of frames in that scene I, that's the only part that looked kind of weird to me but Everything else was solid. I think the track list battle might still have been better. I gotta go back and rewatch. I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I really love this season, man. Um, Isaac Storman, Carmilla's Castle of a Night Creature Armor. That was dope, too. Um, man. So, yeah, I'm hyped to see where this uh, show goes from here. We know Isaac was is definitely gonna be storming um, Carmilla's Castle with a Night Creature Army. Um, and then Carmilla's plan is she has a motion to capture humans, like, <laughs> all across, like, I think, like, two or three countries, something like that. And herd of them like cows. And, well, Trevor and Sypha, well, actually, we don't know what's going to happen with them. They just seem to be on the road, but we'll see if their road, um, crosses over into Carmilla's plot. Um, but, yeah, I'm very eager to see... Um, how this goes best video game TV show ever well this is your boy S. Will Sean the Wonder and I'll see y'all guys next time peace